Hey friends, when I started filming and editing video, I got in a right mess with all of my footage, my files, my final cut libraries, events, projects. I didn't know what to do. And over the course of the last year, I think I have come up with a good system that works well for me. So today I'm gonna to show you how I organize my footage on my hard drives and then how I manage getting them into Final Cut and how I manage my libraries. So hopefully you can avoid the mistakes that I made. So let's do this. So before I get into it, a couple of caveats. Like I said in the intro, um, I'm not saying that this is the best way of doing this. This is the way that I have developed for myself through trial and error. So if you think there is a better way of doing this, then please drop me a comment down below. I would love to hear if I am doing something that you don't agree with or if there is a better way. But I have certainly found through trial and error that these are a couple of techniques which I've used just to kind of keep my sanity when editing and make sure that I know where to find things and that my files are well looked after. What we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into the screen and I'm just gonna roughly go through what I do for each new film project that I undertake. First thing, let's imagine that I've done a one day shoot for someone, some sort of imaginary project. The first thing that I do when I get back with my camera is I create a folder on my hard drive um, and that, uh, let's just call that imaginary project. So this is kind of the, the master folder for everything, okay? And then inside that, I create another folder called footage. Okay, so in this folder, uh, I'm gonna create uh, another folder for each camera that I've used for the shoot. So in this instance, let's say that I used my 100D for the shoot, and then let's imagine that I also used the 100D and then let's also imagine that I use the 7D um, and you know, let's just go wild. Let's say that I also use the GoPro and then perhaps I had an audio source from the Zoom H1. So now I would take all the memory cards out of the cameras and download the footage into their respective folders. Then perhaps I would also have um, anything that wasn't recorded. So I would sort of have an assets folder in here and in here I might have um, background music and maybe some sound effects. So I would find those things. Some of those things, to be fair, I might not have right now. I might actually be in the edit before I'm deciding about sound effects or I might shortlist a few tracks that might work in the edit and I might put them in there in advance. But really the most important bit at this stage is the footage, keeping that tidy. At this stage, this is now where I would create my Final Cut library. Now, before I get into that, let's talk about Final Cut libraries, okay? Apple Photos, or iPhoto as it used to be called, you just have one library, don't you? And that's where you put all your family photos and stuff like that, so I'm used to that. Um, iTunes, you have a music library. You just have one library and you keep all of your music in that, so I'm used to that. Um, Final Cut libraries, if you don't create a library for every project and you try and use them in the same way as Photos or iTunes, you're gonna get in a real mess very quickly and that's exactly what I did. I was sort of 15 vlogs into my YouTube channel, had all of this footage all in one library, my computer was nearly falling over, the fan was sounded like the thing was gonna take off and I realized that actually I made a massive error. So let me save you the same mistake. Every single project that you do, every sort of, you know, uh, whether it be for a client or whether it's a personal project like a YouTube channel or whatever, um, create a new library for every single kind of final piece of output that you're gonna create. I wanna call it a project, but that gets really confusing because within a library you have more projects and events and stuff. But when I'm talking about a project at this point right now, I'm talking about that music video that you're making or that set of interviews that you're doing or that YouTube video that you're making. I'm talking about the project as a whole. So for each 
main project that you do, create a new Final Cut library. And what I would do is I would put that library in this project folder that you've created on your hard drive, okay? So we are just going to go into Final Cut now and we're gonna say File, New, and we're gonna say New Library, okay? And we're gonna call it Imaginary Project, okay? And where am I gonna put that? I'm gonna put it in my Imaginary Project folder that I've already created, okay? So now I have got this um, library uh, called Imaginary Project, and in here, um, we have got just an empty event, okay, that it automatically creates for you, and you've got your smart collections, which I'm not going to get into in this video. Now, this is where it gets tricky for the sake of demonstration because I can't actually import those folders because they haven't actually got any video in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into a different library that I created recently for a project I was doing, which was a sort of music video. So if we come into here, what we've got is, this is where I would drag those folders in. And what you'll see here is in this footage event, which I created, if I open that, what I end up with is all of the folders from my folder structure that I've created in Finder. So we've got the Canon 7D, the 100D, 700D, I shot some stuff on an iPhone 6 Plus and on an 8 Plus, and then we've got some other assets. Admittedly, this did get a little messy towards the end of the edit, but you get the idea. And that means if I want to look at everything that was used, I can click on the event, or I can look just for my audio files. These are some sound effects that I added halfway through the project, and then we've got the individual cameras. So if you drag a folder from your file structure here, like say I wanted the 100D footage, if I drag that into an event, then it will keep the folders, which is really handy. Then, so that one event is kind of all raw footage. So that's one event that I've called footage. Now, if we look at my imaginary project here, Final Cut already creates us an event with the day's date on it. What I normally do is I hit enter on that and I call that footage. So that's now matching the folder structure that I've created on my hard drive. And then within that footage, same as you can see in this library, there's all my different sources, sound, cameras, etc. So after that, I then create another event. So for example, this particular project I was shooting with so many cameras. So once you've got your footage into Final Cut, you want to sync all of those clips up. So therefore, I've then created another event just to drop the multicam clips into. So you could, like when you create a compound clip, you could also create an event and call it compound clips if it was going to be helpful to you. As I said before, I'm not saying that this is the best way. I'm just trying to give you some ideas as to how you can keep track of your footage throughout these projects as well. So then finally, I create another event called projects, and this is where I keep my actual edits. This is where all of the projects live. So you could put, uh, you could put you know, projects in the footage folder or in the multicams folder, um, event, sorry. Um, but I like to keep all of the projects in an event called projects. It just makes good sense to me. And I'm not good at remembering where I put things. So if I've got an event called projects, then there's a pretty good chance I'm gonna know where to look when I open this in a couple of months time uh, and I'm looking for something. One other thing to consider is in your library, any library, uh, if you look at the info for a library over on the right hand side here, you can look, you can see where things are stored. So we've got the media is all stored in the library, the motion content is stored in the motion templates folder. Uh, you can choose to keep that in the library too and that's a good idea if you're using lots of it. And then you've got cache in library and the backups is in the actual Final Cut backups. Uh, which is on your computer. So that's what I use. And the reason I do that means that when I'm finished with a project, because this is what happens with Final Cut, you've 
got all of this video, you've got gigabytes of footage, and then when you put it all into Final Cut, you end up with loads more. Then it creates all of the optimized media and all of this extra stuff on top of that. So you end up with loads, loads of gigabytes worth of video just for one sort of project. So in order for lots sort of long-term storage, the way that I've come up with of doing it is once I've finished that project, I will leave everything for three or four months, especially if there's a client involved, I will just keep everything. And then if there's any changes that come back or further work that develops that they wanna use, then I have still got everything as it was. If after say six months, that project is definitely finished with, it's all over and done with, what I will then do is I'll come back into my finder here and I'll actually delete the original footage folder here and get rid of all of that because it's all in this project folder. So it's all in the library. So then I can get rid of all of that. So that's sort of half of the space done already and saved. The footage is still there. I'm not actually deleting the footage. I'm just deleting the original footage. All of the footage is still accessible in its original format and full resolution in the Final Cut library. And then when I'm really sure that it's done with, I will open the library and I will say file and I will say delete generated library files. And in there, I will delete the render files, all of them. I'll also delete the optimized media and if I've created it, I will delete the proxy media. Now, all of these files are created by Final Cut on the fly in order to produce your finished timeline that you're working on. Some of them are necessary, like if you're using text over a video, it actually has to render that in order to show you what it looks like. And in doing that, it is creating a new file to show you. Um, but any of the sort of optimized media and the proxy media, that is just there to help your workflow and speed up your workflow. So you don't need any of it if you're finished. And secondly, all of that can be regenerated. So if I delete all of that, if there was a lot of stuff in this library, it would dramatically reduce the amount of file size that that library takes up. And if in the future I do need to reuse a project or a timeline within this library, when I open the library, Final Cut will fire up and regenerate all of those assets. Um, it can take a little bit of time, that's why I only tend to do it when I'm really sure that I'm sort of done with something. But what I found is this saves a huge amount of hard drive space. And what it means is when I'm completely finished with a project, all I end up with is one Final Cut library that's named sensibly in a folder that's named after the project and that just keeps it really simple for me. Now some people would delete everything and others would say, oh no, you need to save everything. Um, it's also worth mentioning that what I haven't talked about today is any kind of backup solution. So all of the files that I'm using are on a system that is backed up um, and I'm currently working on a sort of off-site backup solution as well. So not, nothing I've mentioned today is in any way replacing or negating the need for you know, backing up your files. This is just how I'm organizing it. That's probably enough for today. I feel like I've sort of gone on about it a little bit really. So yeah, I hope that was helpful. It took me about a year to kind of get my head around this, figure it out and stop making really stupid decisions about where files live, how I'm organizing libraries and how to move them around how to store them. My hard drives were filling up like crazy. My computer was moaning at me a lot. So hopefully I have saved you some of that headache. And if there's a few tips in there that you find useful, then I would love to hear. So please drop me a comment down below. And other than that, I upload regular videos about cameras, photography, filmmaking, my general journey as I learn about videography and filmmaking. I'd love if you wanted to join me along on that journey. Please subscribe to the channel. You'll get notified when I next upload a video. And other than that, I will see you next time. Bye. Hello. Oh, 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 oh.